Ford Miller and this is Chuck Brooks. We did a podcast, video podcast called Max and Life and Restaurant Food Fast. Um, Restaurant Food Fast was our first one. That came about because Chuck's a chef and he likes to eat. <laughs> so we would film a couple shows and, and eat very well afterwards. Uh, so from that is where we learned, where I learned the concepts behind video. And if, if you go back to the earlier episodes, you can see how the show progressed because oh, when you, can, you can watch a step <laughs> progression of wow, yeah. that's horrible. <laughs> the, the first show, it looked like we shot it in a cave. The, there's absolutely no light. The light's terrible, and you know, and we had one camera, so Chuck would move to the stove, and I'd run over with the camera. <laughs> We got to the point where we were shooting with three cameras. We had a camera posted on the, the stove and a camera posted on Chuck's hands and a, cam and a cameraman who would run around basically doing what, what, what I was. The, a whole steady cam rig yeah. in my kitchen. It was, it was <laughs> just like stepping up on the sink. You know? I'm like, no, it was fun. <clears throat> Interesting. So let's get down to the meat and potatoes. Everybody wants to know. What do you need? Uh, first thing needs an idea. What do you want to talk about? What do you want to broadcast to your peers, to your friends, to whatever? The next thing you have to have is passion. All right. If you don't have, and you're going to hear that a lot between yesterday and today, is passion is the driving force for everything. Whether it's writing a blog doing an audio podcast, video podcast, you have to have a passion for your material, no matter what it is. Unless you're doing it for business. Unless you're, you're doing, doing it for business. Or you want to do it for, okay. do it for fun? Okay. That's it, it makes it a lot easier. Yeah. Last time we had like 15 people who were all just trying to figure out how to do a business podcast. Uh, the next thing needs time. Uh, video especially is more time consuming than audio is. If you're doing a strict audio podcast, you can throw it into something like GarageBand, edit it up, and have it done within 30, 40 minutes. Video takes a little longer because you end up having to go watch it, make sure that your lighting's right, you got your lower thirds coming in when you want them to, etc. Next is you create your content. It's uh, we had the like the worst scripting ever. Because we, we didn't, didn't script. have scripting? We didn't script anything. We had bullet points. No. And, and this went for both shows, whether it was the cooking show or the Macintosh show. There were bullet points that we would just make sure we hit this. We want to talk about iTunes today, so we've got to mention iTunes somewhere. And then you have to have a target audience. This is key. Who, who are you making this for? Are you making this for the world? Uh, you know, it's a, um, you know, for conservation. You have a conservation podcast and you want the whole world to see it. So you have to, to figure your audience is the entire world. Or are you doing something for friends and family? You know, like a uh, cooking show where you don't have to keep telling your sister how to cook a noodle. Exactly. Something Make like a video. That can which, which is what we did too for his sister. Um, or people who like cheese. This, this is my common thing. If anybody was in the podcast, in the, my presentation yesterday, people who like cheese is one of my favorite subjects. That is a very targeted audience. So you know who you're talking to. You know, when you talk about something, you have two types of podcasts. You have the broad, I'm going to talk about Macintoshes. So you have everything that has to do with Macintosh. So you have different um, skill levels coming in. You have different things like that. Whereas, if you have people who like cheese, that's a very targeted audience. So you can talk to a level based on who your target audience is. Uh, what do you need to get started? You need a place to shoot. Uh, we shot Restaurant Food Fast in his kitchen. Considerations for your space to shoot. Lighting. Lighting. That comes up. That comes and up. And lighting. It, it's colors and depth of colors. Uh, two different shows, one behind a dark brown and one with the white walls. Same house, lighting's completely different. That's gonna be one of the major things that, that you're gonna find out when you start shooting video. It's just, you, you gotta look at what your background is. Next thing is a computer or a phone, and that's 
more or less to do your editing. The newer iPhones have an editing capability to them. It's not super, but it's a job. You know, or you know, editing on a, a computer. You need a mic, internal versus external. And this is what I tell every class or every session that I talk to. The mic is the most important part of your video podcast. People will excuse bad audio without without question. I mean, bad video without question. Bad audio, they turn it off in a second. If you hear popping, cracking, you know, somebody mowing the lawn. These lights humming in your yeah. receptors, it's, it's horrible. Spend money on the mic. Yeah, and, and mic, you get a decent mic for less than $100. We can talk about that later. Lights, like Chuck said. You want to see what, if you're shooting indoors, you want to have three-point lighting. And three-point lighting is basically, you have a light directly in front of the person. You have a, a key light. No, the key light's the one directly on the person. A fill light, which is at an angle. Basically and then a light. backlight. That's, your, that's a three-point lighting system scheme. All right. The other thing is cameras. What kind of camera are you going to use? Once again, today's cell phones have sufficient cameras. It's not, you know, you're not going to get the greatest quality, but a lot of new digital cameras. Uh, in fact, they shot an episode of House using a, a D90 or a D60. It was a D something. But it gives them a, a better depth of field. You, get a, you can actually get a better shot using a digital camera than, you know, some film shooters. You're doing talking head, of course, and then you can always just use your laptop. Most everything has a, you know, a little people camera on it. They'll work just fine. This is a quote I found from uh, uh, Izzy Israel, who said, "Include people in your in your video frame. People are more interesting than things. Just something to think about when you're when you're setting up your shots. Um, that's always key. Editing. Uh, like I said before, you can do it on a camera. In the camera, some of the some of the, the, the better cameras will, will allow you to do some sort of video editing." Not great, you can't put lower thirds in. You can just basically set ins and outs and you know, do it that Does way. Does everybody know what lower thirds are? You keep saying that, explain no. what lower third is. Lower third's a little banner that comes at the, at the across the bottom that ex, you know, tells what you're talking about. You generally use that to reinforce the shot that you're doing. So if we'll take the cooking show, if I'm sitting here doing something and I'm saying it, um, we may do a cutaway shot where you fade back to the same scene, but more than putting a lower third, it actually took us 10 minutes to get the product from this stage to this stage. Um, it's more or less an narration. I think it was an narration. But we always use it as a stress point for what we're doing. Um, you can use a Mac or PC for your editing. Um, for a PC, you can use Movie Maker, which is for a freebie you can download from Microsoft. It used to be included in XP. If you get Windows 7, you can still download it for free as part of the... Uh, MSN Live thing, okay? And you can go all the way up to using uh, Adobe Premiere. Adobe Premiere on the PC is pretty much the gold standard, as far as that goes. Unless you get into Avid, and that's just ridiculous. Uh, on a Mac, you can use iMovie, which comes with the Mac. It's free. Uh, you can go from that up to Final Cut Pro. The new version of Final Cut Pro is like $300, which is a huge discount from what it was when it was Final Cut 7 was like $1,200. General consensus comes down, you can spend as little or as much as you desire. If you have exactly. unlimited funds, you can go out and get a red, you can get the best there is, run the highest end editing software, you yeah. have at it. $1,000 mics. Or you can sit here with your iPhone on a little clamp and just record it that way. It all depends on what your production value is in your head and what your audience is going to expect from you. You know, that's the main reason we started getting into multiple shots and, and different things with the, the cooking show. People expect a different production value for that. If you can't see what I'm doing when I'm trying to explain knife skills, it does no good to have a video podcast. Whereas when we do the, the Maxim Life show, which is that's more awards forte, 
um, it's basically talking headshots. So you don't need the multiple cameras. You don't need to spend a whole lot in production when you're doing a talking head type podcast. So it's basically up to your wallet and desire. Lighting. Three-point lighting, that's what I talked about before. Your, your key, backfill. The other's natural. A lot of uh, shows, ex for example, uh, Command M that's done on the internet with Amber MacArthur. They do 90% of their um, lead-ins shooting outside using natural sunlight. <laughs> you can modify the lights. This was something we learned real quick. Um, basically, we have um, we had our fill lights and whatnot, and they were too harsh. So what we did was, because we spent so much money on our setup, our lights were, you know the clip-on lights you get at Walmart for like five bucks? For the desk. For the desk. That's what we used, and we clamped it to a tripod. And then once we realized, hey, these lights are a little harsh, at first we used, we, we called them our, our high-dollar gels, which was basically a piece of white copy paper folded over, just hung on top of it. So it diffused. But it diffused the light. You still got the light, but it, it, it wasn't that harsh and I didn't have to look into real bright lights. Um, towards the end of Max in life, once we moved to, to the new location, we switched to uh, wax paper. When we put wax paper on it, we held it on with uh, clothespins. <laughs> I mean, it, it looks so high tech when you when you well, walk you in. Buy a three point lighting kit. Yeah, uh, the cheapest one you found was it was like, almost a thousand. Yeah. yeah. Like the, so for pro lighting is very important. But it doesn't have to be that expensive. I mean, you can get the. I mean, there's all kind of lights that don't We've work. Throwing halogen work lamps to simple forty watt bulbs. Yeah, we we had a halogen. Uh, we used a halogen, uh, like garage work light that used to set the paper on fire. It set the paper on fire. But we had it on the floor as a backlight, and when we'd stand in front of it, it your your legs would burn the hair on your leg. It was ridiculous. But we did it for our fans. <laughs> uh, white balance. White balance is very important. It's usually on your camera. The, the higher end cameras will allow you to set a white balance. A lot of the lower end cameras don't have that ability. But basically, what you're doing at that point is you get a piece of white paper, you hold your camera in front of it, and you hit the button that says white balance. You're at that point telling the camera, this is white. If not, you'll see sometimes somebody will be wearing a white shirt, looks kind of yellow and whatnot. White balance hasn't been so. Video photography video is photography at 30 frames a second. This is huge with sound. But because think of it like you're taking a picture. You know, you, you want to take that picture and have the subject lit well. Now, if, I'm, if I'm taking a if I'm taking a snapshot, I want my subject to be lit well so I can see what they're doing. So Think of it the same way. If, if I'm shooting video, I want my subject to be lit well because I'm just taking a whole bunch of pictures real fast. And it's composition. Same rules that apply to any other composition that you're doing, whether it's drawing, painting, pictures. Same thing goes for video. You get a much more interesting shot if you notice. I look at all the, the culinary shows all the time. And their new thing is just for composition, they will take... Uh, just a process where somebody's cutting or chopping or sauteing, that's not the focal point. Just like in all your pictures, they want you to break it into thirds. It's the same thing they're doing now with any video is they're putting that focus off to the side just to make it a better shot so you're not bored to death watching somebody chop an onion in half. You know? Distribution. This is a question that I get constantly. Is I just did this great podcast that I want the entire world to see. How do I distribute it? YouTube. YouTube's great. It's totally free. You got up to 15 minutes. So if you're using, if your subject is going to be broken into little, little snippets, make them less than 15 minutes, put it on YouTube. It's totally free. You start your own YouTube channel. Totally free. Uh, and you own the rights when you put it up there, yes? No, you still own the rights. But it can only be up to a gigabit in size, or gigabyte, not gigabyte, gigabyte. Uh, Vidler, 
who was a sponsor here a couple years ago. Uh, Blip TV, Bl and I can basically talk a lot about Blip TV because that's basically who hosted both of our shows. Blip is really nice, it's really free. You can cross post from it, so if you have a, um, a blog spot or a WordPress blog, you can link it to there, so it, it'll automatically create the post on the blog site throw the video, you know, and basically you're streaming the video from Blood. Zero maintenance. We, have, we haven't we have done a Restaurant Food Fast episode in over a year, and we still get 100 downloads a day. Yeah. And you, we, I, have, we, I haven't looked at that site in over a year, but it just, it maintains. And there's tons. Uh, uh, many, yeah, there's Vimeo, there's... Um, I can't get into. There's just tons of them. I mean, if you look up free, you know, uh, video hosting, people your, want your content. Yes, because that's how they're trying to monetize. They're trying to be the biggest player in the field. They want the most content. So there are a ton of people out there who will who and, will do it for free because they just want it. And what I left off of there is on uh, iTunes. Uh, if you want to have a lot of people download your stuff have it available on iTunes. Uh, now, iTunes won't host it. So if you host it on, and that's what we did with Blip, we'd host it on Blip, and you provide that RSS to iTunes. Somebody goes to iTunes, they hit download, it actually downloads from Blip. You got to think about formatting at that point. Too. Yeah, there's a formatting issue, you know, whether, you know, your formats, you want to be MOV versus uh, MP4, whatever, Whatever compression looks good to you. I mean, there, there's a lot of a lot of little pieces that come in, uh, but for for all intents and purposes, if you can get it onto Blip and Blip can play it, iTunes will distribute it. So if you do WMV, uh, MP4, MOV, these are all the ones I'm just remembering off the top of my head. Any standard. You know, the only time you get into issues is some cameras are proprietary, especially we found that Sony Sony's. camera was extremely proprietary. It gave me t a ton of issues trying to get it into an when editable you're format. About cameras, that's one thing to keep in the back of your head, is we could have shot with my Sony, but you would have to go through an additional step of taking it through the Sony proprietary software, converting it to something that we could edit. You could edit and then doing it all over again to edit and get it out. So just make sure that when you your camera gives you some sort of standard, it's not proprietary. Because most of these, the uh, application, the editing applications I talked about, the Mac and PC, will accept most of the standards. And, you know, if you shoot it in WMV, I don't think there's a camera that shoot in WMV, but Apple may give you issues bringing it in. Whereas a, you know, it, my my camera shoots in an MOV format. It, no, it, it's a real odd format. So I have to take another step to make it um, usable, make it yeah edible ready. But for all intents and purposes, I mean, most cameras now will export directly to iMovie or to um, Movie Maker on the app on the. Windows machine. Uh, so that's pretty much all we have as far as that goes. Is there any questions? Tell me you guys got questions because I got like 20 minutes. Yeah, like what are you looking for when you come to a video 101? What are the things you're looking to get out of it? Are you looking more for what the hardware is or are you looking more for the creative aspect? I'm, I'm, I'm curious about a number of things. One is, so you did these videos, these video podcasts. What, what, what did they lead to for you in terms of your work or what happened? Like, why did you do them and, and what was the result? Well, basically, start with, we started all of this podcasting yeah. because he's a geek. <laughs> <laughs> he's a senior systems administrator for UPMC and he loves tech. Uh -huh. So when podcasting first started, he's like, oh, we got to do this. This is cool. So we did. Yeah. And it, it just, just progressed fun. from sound. Yeah, it was just, so then we're like, okay, let's do a video one. What can we do? Well, much the same as everybody goes to him for technology, everybody comes to me for recipes. How to cook, how do you do this, how do you do that? I figured we'd put together a series of things that showed you the basics and using recipes to show you how to cook 
why people can create the food they do in restaurants like that. Because it's all really fast. There's nothing that goes on that's time consuming or you wouldn't be able to serve it like that. So I just we just made a series of like 70. Yeah, 70 something. So we, we got to the point where we couldn't make things fast anymore. Uh -huh. and, and the you know the premise of, of the show was restaurant food fast. Yeah. Now Hutch Bailey, who did the uh, audio show with me yet, or audio podcast with me yes, keeps driving me nuts, wanting us to start it back up because he wants us to do a, a segment on ribs. Yeah, he wants to get into all the slow cooking. And it's like, that's great. Uh, it takes four hours to cook ribs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's no restaurant food fast. Fast isn't even part of that. So, yeah. no, we can't do that. Time lapse? Well, we, we could do time lapse. <laughs> but, but it's still it the food's already purpose. killing me when we used to do the cooking shows yeah. because it's okay, we'll, we'll start at noon. And he still wasn't getting home until four. And we're only shooting a, a half hour to 40 minute episode. But then at that time, the, that was going back to the camera thing. The cameras that we used when we first started were the DV tape. And so in order to get DV tape from DV to an editable format, you had to hook it up to Firewire and watch it again. So you basically had to play it yeah. so, that the, so that the computer could record it. Now, we went, I bought a uh, Panasonic, I, I wrote the, the number down so I'd have it for this, and I don't remember it off the top of my head, but I bought a Panasonic... Um, stop it. It's a Panasonic SDR S7. You can look that up or check it out on Amazon. But what it does is it writes to an SD card. I can take that SD card, pop it right into my computer. It's already in editable format. I just pull it up the computer and I'm ready to run. Um, so you're doing this for fun because <laughs> you're, you're a tech geek. Yes. Huh? And you're doing this for because you're a. Because he's my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Do you work in a restaurant? Are you a chef? Um, I've worked in restaurants for years. I quit. I'm just first manager now. And it's just, uh -huh. I work from home most of the time. Okay. So when he comes up with these ideas, yeah. I go, sure, yeah. we'll do that. And then we end up doing... So you create all this content that's fun online and then do other people like link to it or... or sure. Or do they we still, it? like I said, we, well, no, we, didn't, we don't monetize it. Yeah. It's just there. We get we still get 100 downloads a day yeah. from on both videos shows. on both shows. Wow. And it's just, it's there for, well, the best thing about is there, gratification, um, I had, a, we had a woman wrote us because she was looking for a recipe because her boy was going to a Boy Scout yeah. outing where they were having a contest about what they could cook. She had seen us do bacon-wrapped deep-fried Oreos. Yeah. Oh, my God. And they're awesome. <laughs> and she's like, oh, that's gross. But they're little kids. So yeah. she's like, they'll love them. They like all this weird stuff. She says, until we try them. They won the whole thing. They won everything from every possible outcome they could have. Pork products and deep frying and Oreos. I mean, yeah, it was, like it was awesome. And, and <laughs> it was, that, to me, was the gratification there. You know, I made some little kid really happy. Made his mom really happy because it was really easy to do. So that was the benefit. And that's... Basically, we were having this conversation before we came in today. Yeah, we had a, uh, in fact, we came to PodCamp, I guess it was two years ago, right after we did it. And there was a guy who used to come that was, his name was Mr. Bacon Pants. And he came Mr. Bacon says, Pants. Yeah. You heard him right, Mr. Bacon Pants. He, on Twitter, he was at Mr. Bacon Pants. And he came and told us that he had heard that we had done deep fried bacon. That was the pre the deep fried bacon was the precursor to the deep fried bacon wrapped Oreos, and uh, he was like, "Did you guys really do that? Yeah, we did. You know, <laughs> that was our that was our big claim to fame. That pod camp, people would just come up to, hey, you that guys before did I see it on TV and everybody said, it's just you know these are just things that <laughs> we I, had a deep fryer right. I'll Let's see what you do. You know, look at me, I like to eat. <laughs> so if I can put batter on it, I'm gonna fry it. <laughs> so we did. Um, Rose Online wants to know, um, how do you monetize your your podcasting? Apparently, we don't. <laughs> to, to we be fade honest, too much. Yeah, well, the problem is, you know, I get really excited when I'm doing a show or when I'm doing a podcast. And so, for me, that's the charge. That's what I get. I don't... We, we didn't go into any one of the shows going, I want to make a million dollars. 
because no, right. to be honest with you, I mean, there's people that do it. There's people that, that make a good living doing it. If you're thinking about monetization, we like I said, we've been having this conversation all day because it's what what can produce that those monies, and that's what everybody's looking for. The first year this happened here, that was this place was packed both days. It was down at the, the oh, other place, and that's all people want to know because you know I Justine and, and Pit Girl and all these people were making you know Leo Ports making a ton of money. Callie Lewis, you know, it's when it was new. What are you going to give? What is what is going to be your draw? Why are people going to watch me cook as opposed to watching Emerald or Alton Brown? I'm not looking to compete with that production value. I'm not going to be able to do that. Unless you have a niche market or something that you know is valuable. Um, what was the kid's name who does the one about uh, music? Uh, uh, Walt, Walt Rivera. Yeah, Walt Rivera makes good money monetizing because he does online lessons. So he has something that people want that they can get at any moment that they don't have to set aside time. Uh, being a musician, when I was going to, a, to an instructor, I have to go, okay, well, Saturday afternoon, I have to take this time to go learn X. What Walt has done is taken that model to the point where he says, this is the lesson for X. It's tailored to his students and you can get it at any time. Yeah. Now that is a, that is something that's yeah. functional and you, you've got a market there. What we're doing you know how many how many people really care how I cook? To me, the, the the monetary value was the satisfaction. You know, we've had people call us about the. That's not a monetary value. No, it's, <laughs> no, but it's it, it's a satisfaction because I didn't go into like I said, we at no point went into it saying we want to make a million dollars. He what does I'd it like to, to see how it works. Okay, I got one camera to work. Now let me get two. Now let me get three. Now let me see how I can do those with a switch panel. You know, and that's the reason we did yeah, it. Yeah, that's the reason we. That's the reason I did it, to be honest. With you. But I mean, theoretically, you could start a business doing podcasts. For oh, sure. If you wanted. To. Oh, absolutely. There, there yeah, are right? there are yeah. there are businesses that will will contract out and say, "Hey, can you make me a shirt?" And we thought about that. Don't look at it as a a podcast or a video podcast. Look at it as a short film. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to show you today how we make pens. At, the, at Corporation X. Right. So we're going to videotape this pen from start to finish. You know, how do we do that? For your corporate infrastructure. For your corporate infrastructure. Yeah, you could definitely go into some some company, you know, um, Alcoa. Right. You know, how do you, you know, let's do safety videos for Alcoa. There's no difference between that and what you put on the internet. Actually the only difference is the compression you put on it so that it streams easier. But for all intents and purposes, the content is the same. Two so years ago, our class, half of them literally were business people. So we kind of had to split that class. That's why we keep it so short most of the mm -hmm. time with what we actually say. Yeah. Because half the class was going, okay, I have unlimited funds. How do I set up a shot? Yeah. You know, I, I need to put out an instructional video for my company. And they had more, they just want to know creativity. And then the other people were going, I, I, what kind of camera? I want, I want to do it, and I, I don't want to spend a whole lot of money. Yeah. Uh, you can always do this without a whole lot of money. Like I said, you can use your iPhone. The, the question you have to ask yourself is, what is the production value that I want on my end product? What do you want your return to be? It's, to me, that's my, my main thing. So what, do you, what is your return? Are you getting into this to make money? Completely different field of thought than if you're getting into it for self-gratification, which is basically what we do. We just do it for ourselves. Whether it's your family members going, oh, thanks, that was great. Mm -hmm. Or him going, now I know how to work a three-camera switch. You know, it, it, figure out what you want your end goals to be. And we had Mac people who, who would contact us, ask us questions, you know, we'd answer them on the show, that kind of thing. We, and we wanted to, we, that's going to be the next iteration, hopefully, once we get back. Um, we bring Max and Light back out of hiatus is to, to get more interactive, to have more, you know, give and take with questions. We will take more questions from the room, too. There we go. Um, how is video podcasting different from shows people do on YouTube? Is that different? There's absolutely no difference. 
it's, I mean, you tend to, if I'm doing something on YouTube, I'm not going to tend to do as much structure, structure and much heavy duty editing. You know, because it's going to be really short. It's going to be less than 15 minutes. So if I'm doing something on this show, you know, for this, for example, I'm going to take some shots of the crowd. I'm going to take some shots of the person. I'm going to do my spiel, whatever I'm talking about. And then that's it, the end. Whereas with uh, our, our previous shows, we would end up expounding on, you know, we talk for 20 minutes on the pen. You know, and why it's a good pen, and it clicks this much way. more structural, I think. Yeah, you, you, you tend to get you can to tend to get deeper, and, and you can tend to make it longer. I, I look at YouTube like for commercial type blips. I want somebody to know this fifteen minute thing. All right, I'm done with it. Or something neat you've seen that day. Most people walk around with their phones. Everybody's got videos. It's, I mean, I just used mine the other day because I live in the city of Pittsburgh, one five two zero seven, and I had twelve turkeys in my front yard. I'm like, oh, okay, well, where am I getting 12 turkeys in the city of Pittsburgh? So uh, comes the video. Yeah, you know? and the thing is, too, the, the newer That's phones more YouTube type will scenario. have the ability to, once you shoot that video on your phone, you can pump it right to YouTube. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, it, it goes back to that. What's the best camera? The best camera is the one you have with you. Yeah, yeah. the one so you're going to use. If I have this camera with me and I take a picture of whatever and I want to share it with the world, I'm going to hit the button and ship it up to YouTube. Now, if I take it and I say, you know what, that's really cool, but I'd like to make this a little darker and I want to futz with the colors a little bit, I might not, I'd probably save it and then export it and edit it at home. Now, you mentioned that Blip works with WordPress. Mm -hmm. So would you, you would have to use, like, you'd have to put your videos on Blip or could you just put them directly on your blog? Or no, what you do is you use Blip to house it. Okay. And then so that it's not taking a space on your server. It's not right. taking space or okay. bandwidth from your server. So okay. if, if you ha are using a WordPress type blog on your server and you're paying for bandwidth, you really don't want to be streaming video, especially if it takes off and something goes viral and a whole bunch of people hit it, you end up paying for that bandwidth. Mm -hmm. Whereas with Blip, there is no bandwidth charge. Okay. You, you're basically just putting a link to your to your video on your web page. So when they click on it, it's actually streaming from Blip. It's not streaming. But they can see it on your website. And they yeah. can see it on it just comes okay. right Because, I mean, a couple of the videos from Restaurant Food, like the tailgating, we would get 600 downloads. And if you're thinking of a 45-minute episode, 600 oh. times working against your WordPress server, Yeah. no, they wouldn't have that. Well, you'd be paying a lot of money. Oh, yeah, for your, your, your bill goes. That, that's another thing you want to think about. Can, can, could you do it? Oh, absolutely. You can take your video, incorporate directly, incorporate it directly into your website, and stream it right from there. It depends once again on how your de what your deal is with whoever's hosting your website, because if they're gonna, you know, that DreamWorks or what was it, Dream? Um, the one we were just in. But they were telling us about this one hosting Dreamweaver? company. Dreamweaver? What is it? I'm sorry, Dreamweaver? No, it was a company. It was a hosting company. Hosting they company. used to do Dream here. Dream something. But anyway, they don't charge you for, it, it's 100 bucks a year. They don't. You have unlimited uh, this bandwidth storage, and unlimited bandwidth. this storage for 100 bucks a year. Now, you can use WordPress.com, and but they don't allow you to monetize. You can't put... Um, advertisements on there whereas with like blogspot you can you can tie it into adwords you can monetize a little bit that way uh, but unless you go viral a whole bunch of people you get a whole bunch of traffic you're not gonna you're that's not. changing too we were talking about that yeah. where it used to be cpm which is <laughs> clicks per million nobody's getting a million click throughs anymore i mean it just doesn't leo's not you know, you're not getting those kind of numbers. Um, we're getting unique hits on our sites that we don't touch anymore. Are getting 14,000 unique hits a day. Still not enough to monetize it. You know, you're looking at having to have so much volume pass through your site, and somebody actually exploring. clicking and actually clicking the links. And yeah. There's a whole lot that comes into it. It's not just eyeballs. So they're they're changing the way that the field looks now. They're they're changing the way the marketing goes for for that. They, they realize very million, where 
it's the old advertising model where if I'm going to show you on prime time on two and a half men, how many millions of viewers watch that, and that's how much money the studio or the yeah the studio gets. For podcasts, it's a little bit because, and, and I think that a lot of these advertisers are starting to realize podcasters don't get a million clicks through unless you're Fred. And, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you go viral. And you know who Fred is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fred's very, very annoying. Yeah. But Fred makes a ton of money. He does. Fred makes a ton of money for product placement. Yeah. And for I, I just was actually, you know what? Everybody says it's annoying. Uh, to me, that's impressive. It's all yeah. get out to me. I mean, it for is impressive. Boy, that, that old to be able to come up with that concept in that character in that character and to be able to do all those things in such a manner that it's it, to me it's just it's incredibly creative well it's such a different world we live in though because like i have a six-year-old and i mean she takes my phone and like walks all around the house making these videos narrating everything and she's like put it on youtube i'm like I'm you're six. I'm not putting your stuff on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, but it's, but it, I mean, it's great though. It's like the generation is so open to it. Oh, yeah, well, it's great that, that she yeah. that she has that idea. And then right, you should do it. put it on YouTube. Big deal. You can I make it private so nobody else sees it. Can I do her. that? Yes. Well, the, what, what scares me with YouTube is the comments on YouTube are well, they they can't like, get there's they, so many trolls on. They there. couldn't yeah. even get to you. Can just block comments. There's, yeah. there's, yeah. there's, there's a some of the stuff she does. Some of the stuff it's really yeah. funny. That do that because number but, one, it's going to encourage her. You can send a link. The, once you make it private, like I can you, send to my friends. You can send it to your yeah. friends, and whatnot, and they can't see it unless they have the link. It doesn't get cataloged. It doesn't get you know. It, it doesn't get. Um, That's also the Google, benefit of, of you know, like, bought it and mm-hmm. having your own, it, having your own site somewhere. It, you don't have to have comments, and you yeah. don't have to show anybody that you don't want that site. You can keep it completely private. I didn't know you could uh, privatize it on yes. YouTube. That's good to know. Yes. Maybe, I, maybe she'll start her own channel then. Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, even if it's just between your family, I mean, that's something cool and that encourages right. you to, to be creative. I would never, ever want, you know, anybody to be, you know, tell them, no, you can't be creative. Be creative. Even if you take it and save it locally on your computer well, and she can sit and watch it. Yeah, she that's thinks, what we do wow, now. I'm on the internet. And there's a really good reason for that. Yeah, My kids are 19. Uh-huh. So when you save all that stuff... <laughs> Blackmail. <laughs> Blackmail. Uh, with uh, shows like uh, like Put This On, I don't know if you've ever seen that, um, but there's a, a lot of uh, more uh, shows that are shooting for more of a broadcast aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Um, and do you think that there's uh, going to be a divide between like podcasting and webisodes? <sighs> That's a good yeah, question. When you're talking about webisodes, you're talking about like more of a higher broadcast quality. Well, yeah. the, the thing that Justin like did. That's the that sort of thing that might be funded by a Kickstarter. That's still not a lot of money, but there's some money. Sure. There, there, there are some um, venture capitalists. If you have a really good idea, um, you no, might Justin get, was on what, the longest running? Yeah. Ju- Justin, who spoke yesterday, was on the longest running web uh, comedy. Yeah, web comedy. He was a writer for it, and really funny guy. Really funny stuff. If you have, if you come to podcast, you have a chance to see Justin. Check him out. He's really good. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they they did whole comedy episodes. It wasn't, you know, ours tend to be like how tos, but there are people. Yeah, absolutely. And even the production value again, it's just on how much. The more money you spend, the more broadcast quality you're going to get. I mean, okay. it, there's no two ways around that. If you can fund having even a prosumer read, it's going to be a huge difference than doing it on your phone or doing it with the Panasonic we have. It takes you from that um, duffer, for lack of a better word, amateur like we are, to someone who's actually, this is, okay, this is pro quality. Now, just just a, a caveat where he's talking about a prosumer red camera. They start out at nine thousand dollars, and that's without a that's without a. Lens. That's just the box. Right? That's just the box itself. And, and I mean, you can get them. You can get used uh, Panasonic ones for twenty five hundred, three thousand dollars. You know, go direct to tape. Same thing you see the news crews shooting with. 
Sure, you can go do that, and your quality of video is going to be exponentially better. Do you have any tips for a low cost, under three hundred dollar camera used for like a wet environment? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Amazon. <laughs> to, to be honest, as soon as you I, say I, that, do an underwater. I, I no, no underwater. Uh, just, 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 just wet. Because it might get wet. Uh, yeah, th there's some uh, ruggedized cameras that um, that I've seen on Amazon. I've never had need for one. I'm not sure how much I even trust things that aren't full waterproof. Because if you ever watch, even like uh, Survivor Man, where he has those, he doesn't take expensive cameras out there. So everything you see that he's shooting is from these lower end cameras. But guarantee you, if he's in the jungle, the camera should out every time. Mm -hmm. Those, the moisture, they are orange. fidgety critters when it comes to humidity. So you're, I don't know if there is one, honestly, because I know. I'm sure that somebody makes them, but I don't know what they call Under 300, it. though, it's kind of. I, I don't know. I, I check Amazon. I, a, I check Amazon for everything. What I've seen a lot of people do for those instances is box their camera. So they basically take a, just a, they create a box to keep the water away from it and just to just have like the lens. Well, that was another thing I meant to bring up too. If you have the opportunity to use a tripod, do so. When, uh, number one, it'll make your editing a lot easier. Stabilizers if you have to do it by hand. Yeah. The, there's all kinds of videos out there on how to make a steady cam. And basically what it is is you screw your camera into it, there's a counterweight, you hold the handle, so when you're walking, it keeps the camera from doing this. So nothing, no, that, that's the worst thing from an editing standpoint is Jitters. you get what the, the person's saying and it sounds great, they go, wham, and it makes you seasick. And you're trying to edit going, okay, well, I really like what the, the audio was, but I can't use this video. You know, where, keep the camera as steady as you can. That will make your editing so much easier. Yeah, it will make you nauseous when you're it, as steady <laughs> as you think your hands may be. And I'm generally pretty steady. When you hold a camera, and you hand hold a camera, camera, you will see you will see your heartbeat. <laughs> and it's like, okay, no, steady cam. Put it on something else. Give it some sort of cushion to it. Anything else? How long does it take you to do like an entire show? Like, how much time from idea filming editing posting it well be, because of the way we wish. are <laughs> the way we are because we don't really like i said we don't script anything we, yeah. we bullet point it so our uh pre-production is fairly sparse uh actual production would sit down and i can't i can only remember one time when we actually did more than one thing um and that was because the camera quit running or something ridiculous but say full full production say we go in with what we know we want to shoot we'll use max in life we start shooting at 12 noon on a saturday when is it posted i usually have it posted by eight o'clock sunday night and that's a lot and 90 percent of that time is actually right. the compression afterwards you know once i i do the video and i convert it to a streaming type because you, you don't want to you know post a, 1080p a, hd a, yeah a gigabyte production you know because number one from a dsl that i have at home to post it it's going to take it a month to get up there and number two when you're viewing it on the web you don't really need super quality super high quality because you're not going to get it it's not going to stream real well so you're you're putting a whole lot of effort into something that's not going to be used as much because we 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 thought about it you know going to a high def you well, know, I mean, 1080 we did shoot high def for a while but then we just crushed it down mm. to the point where it anyway. wasn't high def anyway so yeah I really I, I if you intend for it to be distributed and viewed on the web don't really focus on like 1080p because. It, while it looks really good on your monitor, but the original it takes question, a month to move. It's, so we, we would have that done in eight? Yeah, I'd actually have the video edited by six o'clock Saturday, and then once it would start encoding and whatnot, and then the time for me to take it and actually upload it. And again, too, that a lot of that goes back to what exactly is your production quality? 
how much are you putting into your editing? And we how started long doing green screening. That takes a little more than just more. straight shots. You know, it's when he's trying to edge together three cameras as opposed to a one camera shoot. If you're doing a talking head, it's going to be a lot easier to edit that. It's going to be something that's not going to take nearly as long as sometimes, you know, four hour edits when you have three cameras that you have to splice together and do transitions on. Them. So it's uh, it goes into your production value. How perfect do you want it to be? Another little tip for for editors out there, talking to you guys. Um, when you're editing something, uh, just because a transition is available doesn't mean you need to use it. <laughs> because you'll see, and it drives me nuts, because I see so many that I think are really good videos, and then it's like, well, I have 32 different transitions, and I'm going to use all of them. In this video. In this video. So you got stars flying by and switching and <laughs> cubes turning and whatnot. I use two. I use a dissolve or a cut. So if I'm shooting Chuck and then I want to shoot you, it goes, I'm here. Cut's the best. Cut, bang. Cut's the one you're used to seeing when you're watching TV. You're mm -hmm. used to seeing them go, okay, here's Bobby Flay. Here's Bobby Flay cutting a mushroom. And it's just a tink, tink, cut video, that's it. And it yep. just, that transition just smooths those edges a little bit more. And the only time I use like a dissolve is if I'm talking about something and okay, and then Chuck's going to be showing you how to do this. I do a dissolve to Chuck. Right, coming in. Or he'll, he'll dissolve the text. So if there was, if we talked about a specific thing, and we want to put the information up about that, he'd dissolve into a black screen with the text on it. But yeah, just can just videos, because can videos, can video. I don't care how good your video quality is. When you start using all the can stuff, all the transitions, and there, it looks can. And there's no two ways about it. Well, not only, and, and like I said before, it's, it it becomes kind of cheesy. You know, it, it doesn't look as professional when you have when you're using all 30 of the transitions or whatever is built in because like uh movie maker i know for sure has two panels full of different transitions and you take this cut and you stop your cut and take the other piece and you put it there and it gives you a box in the middle throw a transition in. and people take that the first transition throw it in there and they put it in their next piece take the next transition Nice so it just has all kinds of crazy stuff going on when you're trying to cut Think it. Think of it like shots. film versus digital. Film always has that romance quality to it. You're never going to get a digital picture that looks as good as Ansel Adams. It's not going to happen. You're never going to get digital video that looks as good as the old, you know, the old eights and the super eights and all the things that they used to do film on because it has that quality to it. It's not as so warm clipped, yeah. And that's basically what all these things are trying to get back to, is that warmth that you had from literally splicing film together. So when you put all these other things on, it just looks like you've done something. So keep it simple. Simple yes. is better. And as simple as possible. Well, I guess that's it. Any, any more questions? I will not take any more questions. All right. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. This was nice one more. I like having.